Hey everybody, Tom here. I'm going to do a video on the uh, inexpensive yet affordable Siri Cam in all its glory. There's two ways to hook the older style Siri Cam up that come with the disc. Um, there is the app from the App Store, which is the P2P camera app. I will show you. We'll try to make these quick. When you go to the App Store, this is what the icon will look like right here. And uh, the, the easiest way to do this on your Android phone will do this and take just a minute. You open your application. You say you want to, the screen will look like this when you first open it up. It will look like this. It'll ask you if you want to add a camera. You do want to add a camera. Um, if you watch my other video with the newer camera, that works on Android. If you try to scan that camera into this program, it tells you that you have an invalid ID. So they, they're not compatible at all. So to go on with the older style, add camera. You pick your camera up. Say you want to scan the QR code on the bottom. If you don't have a phone with a working uh, camera on it, this will be impossible for you to do. So anyhow, you flip the camera over, scan your QR code, as easy as that. Sometimes direct light helps. If you don't have enough light, take it outside. Manually entering the ID number on the bottom doesn't even do it. It doesn't recognize it. It has to read it through the QR code. And we're going to go ahead and plug the camera in right now. Power first. Ethernet second. This cord is plugged in to the back of my wireless router. Any one of the four ports in back will do. I've scanned my camera. It has recognized the camera ID. I'm not going to... It recognized the camera ID. I'm not going to enter a camera name. Uh, just leave it as I, IP camera. There we go. And uh, on the bottom of the camera it says with the username and the password is. The username on these by default is admin and the password stays blank. So the camera's booted up. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And it's going to tell me that the camera is now online. Once the camera is online, you can go ahead and go to the settings menu. If the camera says offline, you will not be able to do the next step. The camera has to be online settings menu go to where it says Wi-Fi and have it scan your wireless access points to see which one is your yours there's the one at my place it will automatically ask me for the password I will type that in one moment And I will click done. It will tell me that the camera is online and it will now reboot the camera. We'll pause during that, be right back. So now the camera is rebooted. Uh, on my screen it still says that it is online. I will go ahead and touch the camera now so we can see it on my phone in full scale. All right, nice shot of the curtains there. I'll move the camera around. We do have a signal, although the cable is still plugged into the back of the camera. At this point, you unplug the cable. It freezes. And in about 10 seconds, it recognizes it. Open that back up and now we are wireless so that takes care of the Android phone smartphone app setup to do it that way uh, my next video uh, and there's a lot of parameters on this you can uh, you can do so you have to just check that out as you go uh, there's uh, provisions for an alarm email notification 
um, just like a lot of them nowadays. Uh, all right, uh, I'm going to conclude on that one. Uh, the next one I'm going to do will be the same camera. We're going to use the CD in the drawer of the laptop and we're going to set IP addresses, ports, and then we're going to get on to the, uh, we're going to get on to my router and we're going to do port forwarding and uh, reserve an IP address. See if it makes sense for you. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.